I recently passed my AWS Solutions Architect Associates exam. In this video, I will compare my two main learning sources for this certificate. As the thumbnail and the video title suggest, I am comparing the Udemy courses of Stefan Marek and Neil Davis. Before we get into the comparison, I think it is necessary for me to establish my credibility. I passed the Certified Cloud Practitioner exam, CCP, on 5th September 2020 and then passed the Solutions Architect Associates exam, SAA, on 30th September 2020. I passed both of the exams with scores over 900. I watched Stefan's CCP course as well as Neil's CCP course, then gave the exam and passed. After that, I started watching the SAA courses of both of these instructors, at which point I gave the SAA exam and passed. I cleared both the exams on my first attempt. Here are the Udemy certificates of the course completion. The Udemy certificates hold no actual value, but I'm showing these to you to establish the fact that I have actually completed the Udemy courses that I'm about to talk on. What you're about to hear is more or less what you can expect to experience in the courses. If you are in a spot where you have to make a decision as to which course to buy, then this video should help you make a wise decision. If you are someone who is in a good financial situation and can buy both, I still recommend sticking around because I'm going to share some valuable points that should help optimize your learning time. As for the structure, I will start with a few objective facts such as the price, course length, number of students, etc. and then jump into more subjective points such as comprehensiveness and ease of understanding. Price. Both the instructors have priced their courses the same. That sounds strange, I know, but Udemy's pricing model is strange. Without going too much into detail about Udemy's pricing model, what this means from your perspective is that you should see the same price tag on both the courses. Right now, it shows me that both the courses are $12.99 US dollars, but yesterday both were $95 US dollars. Udemy's pricing model is just weird. Can't help it. They change prices every day. In fact, quite a few times every day. In terms of US dollars, the ideal price for most Udemy courses is about $10 US dollars which incidentally happens quite a few times every day. So if you're seeing something else, I recommend waiting. In some lower GDP countries, by the way, the price does drop below 10 US dollars, but now we're getting very technical. So let's end this point on an equal note. Number of students and course duration. Stefan's SAA course has about 190,000 students, whereas Neil's course has about 16,000 students. So Stefan has more than 10 times the students that Neil has. This is a very big factor for most Udemy courses. Typically, such a difference indicates a difference in quality, but that is not the case here. Both the courses are very similar in what they are, meaning both the instructors have done a screen recording while showing how to do certain tasks in AWS from a practical perspective. From a theory perspective, both have done PowerPoint presentations, which are also quite similar. I have a personal preference for Neil's PowerPoints for the aesthetics, but that is not too big a deal. In terms of duration, Stefan's SAE course is about 24 hours long, whereas Neil's course is about 28 hours. You may think that Neil's course has four more hours of video content, which makes it more attractive, but don't do that here for reasons we'll get back to shortly. Comprehensiveness. If you're someone who wants to learn AWS for what it is and not focus a lot on the exam, I think Neil's course is better for you. You know, when you learn something and get that aha moment, when you actually understand why something is done in a very specific way, I got a lot of those aha moments with Neil. There is more depth to his explanation of topics and services. He tries to connect them with more real world examples. This is quite subjective, I understand, but his way of explaining topics logically agrees with me more than that of Stefan. But if you are someone who wants a better chance at passing the exam, then Stefan's course is clearly better. He covers topics and services just enough that you have the right amount of knowledge going into the exam. There are people who do not want to get overloaded with information, and there are people who just want to get the certificate done. I can certainly respect that approach. 
Because of this approach where you're not overloaded with information, I think Stefan's course, even though four hours shorter than Neil's course, covers more exam pertinent information. A byproduct of this approach is that I hardly ever felt sleepy with Stefan's course, but a couple of times I dozed off while watching Neil's course. Hate to admit it, but I think it is an important piece of information for you guys to make a more informed decision. Language. By language, I mean English skills. I know that this may seem unimportant, but it is. But before we jump into the English topic, I would like to say that I have deep respect for anyone that imparts knowledge, which obviously includes both of these individuals. While I'm about to make some critical comments, I will do so in a respectful and diplomatic fashion. And if you, the viewer, are going to join the bandwagon in the comment section, I request that you be polite as well. We don't want any toxicity. Time to dive in. Okay, so the audio for both of these courses is in English, obviously. And I'm not going to be picky about the harmless grammatical errors. But I'm certainly going to point out mistakes that lead you to, down the wrong way in terms of thinking. Stefan is originally from France. And Neil is originally from UK. So my name's Neil Davis. I'm originally from the UK, but I'm really lucky to call Australia my home now. So I am French, and so if you hear a small accent, this is where it comes from, from the sweet country of France. But I've also lived in the United States, I've lived in Australia, and in Portugal. This point is important not because of any political garbage, but rather because of the English language skills. Stefan and Neil both record videos without a script, which means not everything that they say is proofread. They have a general structure planned for each video, and the recording is done on the fly. Unlike me, who is sitting over here with the script. This is a point where Stefan gets a disadvantage because there are times when his sentences make no sense. And at times, even worse, they lead you into believing something that is wrong. Again, I am not talking about small grammatical errors or accent-related stuff because those things are harmless. For example, in this video, Stefan is talking about Instant Storm which is a type of ephemeral storage in AWS. Then if you want to have some hardware storage, we can use an EC2 instance store. So it's going to be very, very high performance. It's going to be hardware disk attached to our EC2 instance, but because it is hardware, the storage is going to be lost if we stop our instance or terminate it. Some may take that as a meaningless sentence, and some may implicitly conclude that EBS storage is not hardware then, which is wrong. I personally started wondering if it was a type of RAM drive. I'm not going to start explaining what these things are because that's not the point. The point is, Stefan created a confusion. And I'm not saying that his own knowledge is flawed because in his other course, which he recorded before this one, he has explained the exact same topic correctly. A and there are quite a few more examples, but I think I've made my point. Let's talk about Neil's mistakes now. He makes some minor grammatical errors at times, which is totally fine, nothing that leads you to additional confusion. At times he will realize that he messed something up and then he will say the entire sentence again, which is fine, that is how videos are made, we make mistakes. But that incorrect part is supposed to be edited out in post-production. Neil forgets that very often, which gets irritating. And these mistakes are relatively harmless quite often, but there are times when you're explaining these subtle differences between two things. In that context, such mistakes are not okay. Speaking of post-production, Neil's course's audio quality is not as good as that of Stefan. For the most part, you won't find much differences, but at times you will find these high-pitched sounds that really hurt, especially if you're wearing headphones. Before jumping into the next big point, which is practice exam questions, I have one additional comment. You may think I'm being excessive, and I probably am. AWS has this service called Elasticash. And cache is a common IT term. It is a software or hardware component that makes future access of files quicker. Very loosely defined, but you get the idea. Stefan pronounces it cache instead of cache. So now let's talk about Elastic Cache. And Elastic Cache is Manage Redis or Memcached. And there are multiple videos where Elastic Cache is the main topic. So you repeatedly hear this incorrect pronunciation and it irritates me. So if that is something that irritates you, just be aware. 
incorrectly pronouncing important terms diminishes your credibility as a speaker and an instructor. Practice test questions. Now, this is an important topic, right? I want you, the viewer, to understand that all test takers are required to sign a non-disclosure agreement before starting the exam. That means I cannot get very specific because I intend to respect the agreement. Here's what I can say though. Both the instructors have a very good understanding of the actual exam questions and therefore the questions in their practice exams and the small quizzes that you find at the end of every chapter are very close to the real deal. But the practice exams by these instructors have service names as abbreviations and no full forms. The real exams also include the full forms of the services, which is good for test takers because service names usually give a good idea of what it is that they do. Therefore, you can make more educated guesses if you are guessing. Conclusion in this comparison video, we talked about objective things such as price and the number of students. Both the courses are priced similarly. Number of students, while an important factor for most Udemy courses, is not really important in this comparison. Then we talked about subjective things such as communication skills, practice test quality, and comprehensiveness. I really appreciate both the instructors for putting out such high quality educational content for all of us for such an affordable price. But what course should you buy? If you want to pass the exam without getting too deep, go for Stefan's course, else go with Neil's course. If finance is not too big a factor, buy both and optimize your plan using the points presented in this video. If this video helped you make a better decision, please smash that like button, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.